Today's topic comes from a recent discussion I had with a partner focusing on how partners can participate in Microsoft events. Are you talking about the major Microsoft events such as IT Pro Focus Ignite and Developer Focus Build or Microsoft's annual partner conference Inspire, which generally happens every July? Yeah, not just Ignite, Build, and Inspire, but looking at the broader category of Microsoft hosted events that happen every year all around the world. So some are smaller, but those are the major ones, the marquee events. Working for various Microsoft partners for more than a decade, I've had the opportunity to participate as a speaker, a sponsor, uh, and, and an attendee at events on five different continents. For most of these events, especially those larger marquee events like Inspire, uh, the role of partners is critical to their success. In fact, in my technology evangelism and business development roles that I've been in the past, uh, meeting with partners and slowly weaving my way through the expo halls to talk with vendors and partners, that's the real value of attending those events. Of course, aside for the for the dinners and the happy hours and the after parties, of course. But overall, right, isn't it pretty straightforward for partners and how to participate um, all at extracurricular activities aside. Uh, Microsoft has a you know, call for sponsors and unless an event sells out all sponsor spaces, you can usually swing in late in the game and secure a booth. How are partners not participating in these events? Well, that's a great question, you're, but you're right. Uh, the official sponsorship of Ignite or Build or Inspire is fairly straightforward. Uh, you do need to be plugged in with the channel leadership and your Microsoft contacts uh, to be sure that you hear about the marketing opportunities early because most of these events do fill up quickly, the best space, spaces get taken, and they even sell out. Uh, so, But that's not really where the guidance I had in mind for this segment. Uh, I figured you had something else up your sleeve. What's next then? Yeah, so the first piece of advice I have for partners is to always go into these marquee events with a specific plan. I know that sounds very generic, but it's I always have a plan for that. But it's true here. Everyone who attends on your behalf should have specific goals in mind, such as which sessions are we going to attend, which are important to us. For example, if there's a new product that Microsoft launches, we want to make sure that we understand what's going on with the latest release. What's the timing? What are the APIs that are open for partners? What are the service opportunities that are created around that? You also want to go and look at what competitors you, you want to go and scope out those that have had booths, others that might be causing you uh, pain within a region just to better understand what their marketing and their sales pitch, their story is. So you can be ready for those, uh, which Microsoft leaders or teams that you want to meet with a lot of booths that are out there, a lot of personnel that are on, you know, at these marquee events, who's there, who do you want to meet with? Who can you meet with while you're there? And then which of your current partners and prospective partners that you want to meet with? And then also you want to start talk with your sales leadership, try to understand which current and prospective customers are also going to be attending. Yeah, uh, it actually makes perfect sense. You essentially want to always be doing something, right? You should have a plan and then figure out how to execute it. Exactly. Yeah, I'm a fan of having an event brief so that everyone attending knows their roles and the metrics to measure the success of the event. Um, that's a big issue with most partners. They don't define what success looks like for each event. Um, we've actually had situations here at our point where we not only do we plan the event, but we also practice uh, and kind of role play. If someone comes up to the booth, if you've never pitched the company and told, to, told the value before, ensuring that everyone's kind of on the same script um, ensuring that people have the necessary tools they need to be comfortable having a lot of these conversations as well. Uh, and if you don't define success, how do you know if you've overachieved or even underachieved at most of these events? Exactly. And to your point, I love everybody should know the elevator pitch. Our goal for this event is this is the messaging that's key for this event. So these types of events can be a huge investment for most partners. So it's critical for you to make the most of that investment. And I, I measure uh, success uh, when I look at an event brief. Did all of the meetings that we had planned, did they happen? Did people show up? If they didn't show up, why not? If they did, what were the next steps from that? Um, how many serendipitous encounters, ad hoc meetings, you know, happened? I went to the Microsoft booths, ended up meeting with the product team and engaging in a great discussion about our products with Microsoft's latest release. You can't plan for those ad hoc meetings 
But one of the things that I do, especially if I'm in a dry spell, I don't have a session, I don't have a specific meeting, I've got an hour or two in between those things, is I make a goal to go and it's every hour I meet at least three new people. I will go shake hands, introduce myself, go into for um, Inspire, into the international lounges in regions that I know where our business is growing and make some introductions to people that also look like they're not in the middle of a meeting or a discussion. Every time I make goals like these and make a concerted effort to reach them, I meet or exceed those goals. Yeah, you know, one of the best pieces of advice and tricks that I actually got when attending these uh, conferences when I first started out in my career was when you're going to lunch, never sit with your friends. If you're going to lunch with a group, oh, there's a ton, this kind of this tendency to just kind of cluster together with folks that you know and you're comfortable with. Uh, but when I started going, I went with somebody, folks, I'm listening to my note, Ducks, and he would force me to sit across the table from him um, to force me to engage with other folks that are going to the event as well, because that's how a lot of those just ad hoc discussions happen uh, over a meal together. So I think that's a fantastic uh, trick to use, and it's a really easy way to have some of those more serendipitous encounters you mentioned. Uh, and then, of course, once you're back from the event, follow-up is key. Uh, as part of your plan, create a simple workflow and adhere to it. Call your new leads, connect with them on LinkedIn or other social platforms. Make intros to your sales and services teams as appropriate. There's always a lot of work to do right after an event. Exactly. And that's really my second piece of advice for partners. You lose most of the, the value of your invent, uh, investments by not following up. So always follow up. Always. Speaking of following up, if you've not already done so, uh, be sure to sign up for the AdPoint Partner Program. Go to adpoint.com forward slash partners and get started working with your partner manager to build out your success plan, which might include doing something with AdPoint at the next Microsoft Marquee event. And we'll see you there. 